Welcome to the data.medicare.gov Get Started training session. My name is Rebecca Catterson, and I'm with NORC at the University of Chicago, a nonprofit social science research group. CMS contracted NORC to conduct this training for users of the COMPARE website's data. As a bit of an introduction to today's training, in addition to accessing information about providers through the CMS COMPARE websites, Nursing Home Compare, Hospital Compare, Home Health Compare, and Dialysis Facility Compare, you can now obtain and interact with the data that power these sites through data.medicare.gov. The data on data.medicare.gov mirror the current data on the Compare websites. Beginning in July of 2013, the platform for the downloadable data will be data.medicare.gov. Additionally, based on feedback CMS received about data.medicare.gov, CMS introduced a redesigned website in April of 2013. The objectives of today's training are to provide an introduction to data.medicare.gov, demonstrate options for accessing the data, describe how to make use of the site's tools for exploring and interacting with the data. We hope today's training introduces you to data.medicare.gov and how the site functions. However, we are not experts in the COMPARE data and thus will not be discussing specifics of the data today. Before we start the training, John Booth, Director of the Web and New Media Group at CMS, will say a few words about CMS efforts to provide open data and support the digital government strategy. After that, Joe Pringle from Socrata, the contractor responsible for the design of data.medicare.gov, will lead the more technical portion of the training. He will provide an overview of how to access data on data.medicare.gov and the functionality available. John? Thank you, Rebecca. I wanted to note that CMS has a long history of providing the data that powers the Medicare.gov Compare websites. We first started providing the data in downloadable format over 10 years ago. However, over the past two years, we've tried hard to advance and improve our platform significantly to meet the needs of a variety of data users. Highlights of these efforts include the initial launch of data.medicare.gov in late 2009, providing alternative versions of the downloadable data, the ability to view the data sets in your browser, and the ability to create custom views and visualizations of the data sets. Launching APIs on data.medicare.gov in October 2010 to allow third-party organizations to embed our data in their websites, their web applications, and their mobile applications. The recent internal process changes to allow us to update data.medicare.gov in parallel with web updates. Traditionally, the availability of these data sets lagged one to two weeks behind web refreshes. This change was implemented in July 2012. And most recently, in April 2013, the redesign of data.medicare.gov, which we are presenting here today. There are a number of reasons CMS has made these changes. First, data.medicare.gov is part of CMS's efforts to support the digital government strategy and President Obama's recently released executive order about open data. The executive order states that providing open data in accessible and machine-readable formats is the new default. And it says that high-value data sets should be available via bulk download and via APIs. This is exactly what we're focused on at CMS and we view CMS data as an enormously valuable public asset to help us understand the state of health and our health system and how they might be improved. All of the data from the Compare websites are available at data.medicare.gov for online access and reuse, including in the next several months data from the Physician Compare tool. In addition to viewing the data in your browser, you can download the data in a variety of formats. You can also access the data through an application programming interface or API which lets you interact in real time with the same data we use to power the Medicare.gov website. We're committed to continuing to release valuable data in a variety of formats that are useful to researchers, policymakers, the private sector, and the public. Hi everybody, this is Joe from Socrata, and I'm going to give you a tour of the platform and show you the new data.medicare.gov I'm going to show you how to navigate through the site to quickly find what you're looking for, how you can access and download data in a variety of different formats, how you can create views and visualizations and maps using the data, and how you can save them for later and also share them with friends and colleagues. 
So let's get started. So this is the home page and from the home page you can quickly dig into the data for each of the Medicare Compare websites and directories. You can use the top navigation from wherever you are within the site to do the same. You can link to the hospital compare, nursing home compare, home health compare, dialysis facility compare websites as well as the supplier directory and Medicare's helpful contacts. These links will take you to the medicare.gov website. There's also information for developers explaining how you can use the APIs for the data sets within the site. There is help content to help you get started using the site and how to answer specific questions. As part of the help content, there is some specific information on how to download and view data. There's information on how to create your own visualizations and there's a series of help videos that you can use that explain many of the features and functions that I'll be showing in today's training. So before we get started, what I wanted to show you is how you can create a profile on the site. You don't need to sign in, but if you do, you can create and save views and visualizations that you can come back to later. So to create an account, you click on create an account on data.medicare.gov in the upper right hand corner. You fill in the form, it sends, it, it sends you an email, and then you complete the registration process. So I'm going to sign in. And, and let's take a tour through the site. Uh, before we get started looking at the different areas of the site, I did want to call your attention to uh, the fact that on every single page we invite feedback. We'd love to hear from you how we can make the site even better. So if you click on that link you can fill in a form and, and send us feedback or suggestions on how we can improve the site. In addition, uh, I just wanted to point out that I'm going to show uh, the functionality and tools of the Socrata platform and how you can use it as a way to download and access data in a wide range of formats. Also, how you can preview and visualize and map the data directly on the site. Uh, but I did want to, uh, to remind everyone that I'm not an a, a expert in the, uh, in the compare data sets, and so I'm just going to show you things from the standpoint of the platform. As I go through the site, I'm going to show you a range of different views and visualizations that you can create, including bar charts and column charts and heat maps and point maps, as well as filtered views and roll-ups of the data sets. Let's start by looking at the hospital compare data. So I'm going to go to the hospital compare data page and this is where you can access the official data sets used on the Medicare.gov Hospital Compare website. If you just want the data in Microsoft Access or CSV flat files revised formats, if you just want the full data sets, you can click on these big yellow buttons and download it directly from here. You can also, in some cases, you click directly on it and, and uh, in others, depending on your browser or whether you're a PC or a Mac, you might right click on these and save the file to a particular location. If you want the original CSV flat file format, you can download the Access database file and then convert to CSV from within Access. In addition to the data sets, you can also see supporting documentation describing the data and the fields within them. So this is the supporting documentation for the hospital compare data. In addition, occasionally you will see announcements in this area either related to these data sets or the site in general. So that's how you can quickly download the data in either Microsoft Access or CSV flat files formats to get the full hospital compare data sets. 
In addition, for those who want to be able to preview the data or who are less familiar with the data, who may want to just interact with a certain portion of it or create charts and visualizations and maps, the Socrata platform allows you to interact with the hospital compare data in other ways. So let's take a look at that. Down below the downloadable data sets is a set of interactive data sets. And for every area of data.medicare.gov, uh, there's a set of links on the left-hand side that you can use to navigate through those interactive data sets. The categories are identical to the tabs on the Hospital Compare website. In addition to browsing through the interactive data sets using the left-hand navigation, you can also search for data sets using keywords. So let's say I'm interested in the process of care data in Hospital Compare. So I'm going to do a search for process of care and that returns a set of search results based on that keyword search that I just did. So that's how you can search and browse through the site to quickly find the data that you're looking for. Now what I'd like to do is show you how you can use the interactive data functionality to create views of the data, to create charts and visualizations and maps. Why don't we use one of the process of care data sets that we just searched for and let's imagine that I'm working on a quality improvement demo focused on hospitals in several states. So I'm going to start by clicking on the name of one of the interactive data sets to open it up and that opens it up in an interactive data set view where I can see the data in my browser and there's a row for each record in the data set. So let's do a couple things with this. The first thing I want to do is filter it. Again, let's imagine I'm, inter uh, I'm interested in a, a few states. Maybe it's sort of the, some states out west around Texas and Colorado, New Mexico, for example. Um, and I, I might also be interested in maybe I'm doing a briefing uh, or a presentation where I want to uh, create a PowerPoint slide. So let's visualize this data set and create a column chart. I'm going to group the data by state. I'm going to skip over naming my axes and pick out a few measures. Maybe I'm interested in measures related to heart attacks. Uh, so I'm going to pick several and see what that looks like. Okay, so so this is a column chart showing the data for these states for these three measures. Uh, once this is set up, I, I can save this as a view that I can come back to and, and use later or, or use uh, grab this same visual as the data are refreshed over time. So So let's name this and save it. Now that it's saved, you can also add and change the visualization if you decided you wanted to add another state. Maybe we want to look at Utah and maybe instead of New Mexico, we want to look at Nevada. Now maybe I'm happy with it and I'm going to save it again and I'm going to share it with a colleague. So maybe I'll share via email and type in the email address of someone that I want to share it to. Check this out. So, so I just shared that data set 
You can also share it via Twitter as well as your friends on Facebook by using these icons up here. Okay, so let's take a look at a different data set and see some of the other things you can do with it. I'm going to go back to the hospital compare page and I'm going to open up a different data set. Let's, let's use the healthcare associated infections data. And let's do something called a roll-up. So this data set provides provider level data that's categorized by state, by zip code, by county, by measure, uh, and what, what, what you can do with any data set on the platform is roll up data uh, by different columns in a data set. So I'm going to click on filter and sort and roll up. The first thing you do is you check this box that says roll ups and drill downs and then you can use this uh, group by feature to decide what columns you want to group by. So I'm going to, I'm going to group by state and I'm going to group by zip code and I'm going to group by measure so these are the different measures in the data set then I'm going to add my roll-up column this is what I want to aggregate so I'm going to choose the the score and what function I want to uh, what to do on it I, in this case I'm going to do an average but I could also do a count or a sum or a max or a min in this case I'm going to do an average okay so this is now created this rolled up data set so it has the, the states, the zip code, the different measures, and the, the aggregated score. The next thing I'd like to do with this is maybe create a set of filters uh, that I can use to filter it. So for, first off, maybe I'm interested in, in the state of California, so I'm going to filter by that. And I might want to filter by measure as well, so I'm going to add an, another filter. And I'm going to add a uh, uh, show the suggested values for this filters and so it, it just automatically populates some filters and then I'm going to uh, choose the first one this is the measure I'm interested in and now I have a, a rolled up data set that I can use that has it's just California zip codes it's this one measure and it's uh, just showing the the data that's available available for that and now now maybe I want to do a couple things one I'm going to save this as so I'm saving that as a view that I might want to come back to later if you want to view the charts and filtered views and maps and other custom views that you create you can click on your profile in the upper right hand corner and here's where you'll see a list of the the views that you have created and saved I should note that these these views are slices of the data or they're charts that are that are being powered by the data the the data sets themselves are updated every quarter and so the data in these views or the charts may change based on changes in the data. I also can export this in a range of, of different formats. Uh, in this case, um, maybe I just want it as a CSV. So I'm downloading it as a CSV file. But we have other, other formats as well. But for bigger files, CSV is a good a good format because Excel will max out if you have too many too many rows in a data set so here's the data that I grabbed I might be maybe I'm manipulating in, a, in Excel um, in some way note that some some of the hospitals don't report on this measure the other thing you can do with any uh, any view of a data set or a map or visualization is you can embed that into a website or a blog post you can choose uh, different sizes for that it, it creates this little embeddable data player that's kind of like a, a YouTube for data that you can use on the web and so uh, CMS uses this on Medicare.gov let's take a look at what that looks like 
if I'm going to actually exit the site and go to hospital compare and click on the hospital value based purchasing data and go to the total performance scores so this is an embedded data set and again this is embedded in medicare.gov but it's powered by data in Socrata you can uh, interact with the uh, the data player here you can search for uh, a, a term in the data set you can see some information about the data set uh, you can also share it if you want to tweet it or share it via email you can expand this so it's in a full view you can also download it directly from here the same way we did earlier so let's take a look at some different data and some other types of views and visualizations you can create. I'm going to go to the Nursing Home Compare data homepage. And again, if you're interested in the full data sets in Microsoft Access or CSV flat files formats, you can download them just like you can for Hospital Compare. Uh, but let's look at one of the interactive data sets here. I'm going to go into the, the provider ratings data set. And it already has a set of, of default filters defined. But let's, let's imagine that I'm interested in going a little deeper into these data than I can on, on the Nursing Home Compare website. I just want to explore them a little further. So I'm going to, uh, and, and actually right now I'm in the process of looking at, at nursing homes with my parents who happen to be in, in North Carolina. So I'm going to filter the data set by North Carolina. Um, I'm actually looking around the Durham area. And let's say I want to look for both four and five star facilities. Um, one of the things I can do is see these on a map. So I'm going to create a, a map with these where I, just like we've been doing previously, I, I actually want to see all the measures, um, all the ratings in a flyout. So I'm going to add those by provider number and just say I want each of the ratings. And so let's create the map. So here's uh, Durham, and maybe again I can easily sort of look at the flyouts and see uh, see the the star ratings for a particular facility. And maybe I'm so this is this is one data set, but I might want to browse through other available data on nursing homes as well so so I'll go ahead and save this and um, and let's go back to nursing home compare maybe another um, thing I'm interested in is the staffing for different nursing homes and so I'm going to go to the the staff information data set and again, I think what I'll do is I'll create a similar filtered view where I'll say I want North Carolina and Durham. And I want to create a, a visualization of the different staffing levels. So I'm going to create a um, a stacked bar chart. I'm going to choose the provider number as the grouping or the, the access labels. I'm going to say really what I want to see is that the different uh, staffing hours per resident per day. The registered nurse hours, the licensed vocational nurse, vocational nurse hours, and the 
certified nurses assistant hours. I'm just interested in um, how much time uh, per resident per day for each of these. So, so I just just uh, created a, a chart for this, and then I can see this first provider. Uh, maybe I'm really interested in 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 how many hours per resident per day for for registered nurses um, because of a certain condition or something that my parents might have. So so anyway, this this just lets you drill in and, and explore the data. I think one of the ideas behind this site is to allow uh, people to explore and create visualizations in in ways that, uh, that that doesn't require them to download the full data sets and use some analytics package or, or be an Excel wizard and just be able to quickly create visualizations and understand the data uh, right here on the site. So I'm going to save this. And next, I think I'm going to move on and look at some home health data here. And maybe I'm a graduate student and I am uh, interested in uh, doing some joint research project with some team members on home health yeah. uh, and the impact of home health on on certain outcomes and so um, I am um, looking one one thing we're going to be working with this data for a while so the, the what, what I might do is save some views that I can use for the duration of this project uh, so let's start by creating some default filters again if I'm using this over the course of a of a research project for example I might want to um, to have some filters that I can use over and over again. So I'm going to filter by state and by city and uh, sorry and by the type of ownership. And to start with, I'm going to I'm interested in Maryland. And so maybe I want to start by just creating some different charts. Uh, with different slices of this data. So I'm going to um, filter it and start by looking at facilities owned by official health agencies. Maybe I'm going to create some sort of a, a chart here um, where I want to group by uh, ID and show maybe I'm looking at how often patients are, are reminded to take their flu vaccine versus how often they have to go to the hospital. I can change a couple colors here and create a chart. So here's, um, here's a column chart created with this data. And, and uh, again, I, I'm just kind of showing how you can use the platform, but, but Hypothetically, maybe somebody here is working on some some idea of a correlation between these two measures, and they just want a visual that they use to to demonstrate it in some way. Okay, let's take a look at one more one more data set here. Let's imagine I'm interested in um, the dialysis dialysis facility compare data, and maybe I'm looking at the availability of of uh, late shifts facilities around the country. So I'm going to go into this uh, listing by facility data set. I'm going to add a filter to it. And so I'm going to just change this filter down here to say late shift and I'm going to check that. Next I'm going to create a map and this time I'm going to choose what, what's called a heat map and this just shows the sort of a distribution uh, on a map layer. So I'm going to pick heat map. I'm going to um, choose a couple settings here. Turn off the legend. Le 
again, let's imagine I'm a, I'm a blogger and, and maybe I'm uh, blogging about the lack of these services here in this area of the country. And so I've, I've created this map and now I want to embed it as a way to um, have a much more uh, a much more powerful blog post about it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna grab this embed code and paste it into my blog. So that's another example of a way you can use Socrata to uh, to explore the data and create views and visualizations uh, in a way that doesn't require someone to be an expert in in um, some analytics package like SAS or or be a wizard in Excel, they can just create views and visualizations right here on the site. Um, one last thing I did want to uh, talk about is what are called APIs. Uh, APIs are, called, are application programming interfaces. And if, if you think about this website, this is a human interface. This allows people to navigate through the site to find what they're looking for, to ask and answer questions, uh, to accomplish tasks. An, an API allows computers to interact with, uh, with these data in the same way and query the data and pull, pull data out of these data sets to, to power uh, third-party programs or tools or applications. Researchers can use APIs to grab data that's live without having to download it in batches. So I'm going to show you an example of an API that we created for this data set. This is an example of an API developer page and what this does is it it provides a developer who might not know very much at all about the data. Uh, it provides them with a, a guide on how to use this particular data set it explains what's there, it explains the different columns, it provides the the column name and any metadata that's provided in the data set. It also provides uh, code samples that help them see how they might build against the API in various ways. It shows them uh, examples of how they can call the data in different ways. So. Our goal for today was just to let everybody know that this is there and for anybody that's interested in using the APIs we would love to follow up directly and, and provide assistance uh, on, on to help you get started with those. Now I'd like to remind everybody that uh, for, for everything we've covered in this training we have a big help section on how to use the site uh, and uh, so we, what we covered today will be posted as a video that you can view again. Uh, in addition, you can access help on specific topics like downloading and viewing the data, creating your own visualizations and filtered views. The things we showed you today, there's, there's guidance on this if you need to refer to it. We also have a way you can contact us with questions. Um, for some of the data, you can ask questions about the data or the data sets. If you have questions about how to use the site, come to contact us, click on this link, and ask your question right here. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Rebecca. Thank you, Joe, for your presentation and John for your introduction, and thank you for viewing this training today. You can find other data.medicare.gov videos and help resources under the Help tab on the website. And lastly, please email data.medicare.gov and org with questions or comments on today's training. Your feedback will help CMS develop future resources and training sessions related to data.medicare.gov and the COMPARE websites. Thank you.